Good evening. My name is Alpha Jabarian. I'm the uh, producer and the host of uh, the weekly USA Armenian Life TV program on AMGA TV. And I'm also the managing editor and executive publisher of uh, print editions of uh, English language USA Armenian Life magazine and Armenian language Haigyank Armenian Weekly, as well as the editor of uh, USA Armenian Life Facebook page, armenianlife.com, and weekly electronic newsletter that's sent via e-blast to tens of thousands of uh, Armenian and non-Armenian readers around the world, uh, reaching a readership audience of uh, over half a million individuals. Uh, our guest today is uh, Mr. Garbis Korajan, uh, who is recognized by uh, several governments around the world for his work uh, as a consultant in the World Bank, uh, Canadian International Development Agency, CIDA, the United States Agency for uh, International Development, USAID, the United Nations Development Agency, UNDP, the United uh, the, the Government of China and the Foreign Affairs Ministry uh, of uh, the Republic of Artsakh, Nagorno-Karabakh, a graduate of Harvard's Kennedy School of Government in Public Administration, specializing in ethical leadership. Mr. Korajan has built a solid record as an, uh, an international consultant and trainer on good governance, ethical leadership, anti-corruption education, and social accountability. Thank you, Mr. Korajan, for uh, taking time out from your very busy schedule and join our viewers today. It is my pleasure, Mr. Jabarian. <clears throat> uh, in the last 30 years since independence, Armenia has uh, had uh, three president presidential administrations followed by the uh, Prime Minister's administration. Um, from 1991 to 2018, Armenia was governed by a presidential administration where the bulk of the executive powers uh, laid uh, in the hands of the president. Uh, the, the first president, Levon Terbedrosian, served from 1991 to 1998. He came to power right after the collapse of the Soviet Union, uh, Union and the independence of Armenia. Armenia was recovering from the 1998 Spidak and Gumri earthquake and was facing economic hardship uh, and shock after the fall of the Soviet Union. Factories were unjustly closed and, uh, and the country faced economic hardship and high rate of unemployment. Factories were illegally dismantled, sold as scrap metal to Iran. Ted Petrosian was implicated in corruption over the wholesale of scrap metal to Iran, which effectively destroyed the rail system in Armenia, depriving Armenia from a very vital rail system. Armenia fought the Artsakh Nagorno Karabakh Liberation War from, 1990, uh, from 1988 to 1994 and emerged victorious. As Armenians were ready to liberate Nakhichevan, which was uh, given as a gift uh, by uh, Soviet dictator Stalin to uh, the newly formed Azerbaijani Socialist uh, Republic, reportedly Terbedrosian sabotaged those efforts. In 1998, Terbedrosian crossed the red line when he publicly expressed willingness to make territorial concessions to the Azerbaijani Republic that had just lost the war against Armenia. In response to strong popular demands, then Defense Minister Vaskin Sarkisian forced Terbedrosian to resign. Acting Prime Minister Robert Kocharyan was elected the second president of Armenia. President Kocharyan ruled Armenia with an iron fist. Uh, uh, fist. He was responsible in the murder of 10 peaceful citizens demonstrating peacefully in Yerevan. Under Kocharyan, oligarchic system, which was created under President Terbedrosian, continued to flourish. Kocharyan served from 1998 
to 2008. The, the second presidential era, uh, although registered some successes, but it also registered major socio-economic political failures. Uh, Serge Sarkisian, the second and third presidents with President Serge Sarkisian and Robert Kocharian, uh, with Serge Sarkisian coming to power through electoral fraud, uh, vote rigging and intimidation, apparently at the time when he was elected, many Armenians in the diaspora were clueless about the inner workings of Armenia's uh, election system. Uh, Sarkisian replaced Kocharian and ruled the country under the cover of complete terror, uh, formed a 25,000 strong police force. Uh, they used brutal force uh, to quell peaceful demonstrations. Under President Sarkisian, corruption, nepotism, and mismanagement continued to flourish in Armenia. And the same process took place in the Armenian church under Karikin II. In 2018, in order to emulate Russia's President Putin, uh, Vladimir Putin, Sarkisian promoted changing of the constitution, transferring executive powers to the prime minister's office, and his Republican Party of Armenia parliamentary majority elected him as the prime minister, helping Mr. Sar uh, Sarkisian perpetuate his stay in power. A week after being elected as prime minister, Sarkisian resigned under pressure from citizens and tacit support of wide circles of the Armenian diaspora. Mr. Korajan, what factors contributed to bringing change in Armenia and the importance of Armenia moving forward? What can you say about that? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Javarian. Um, thank you also for your comprehensive background information on our three presidents and the prime minister, our new prime minister. Change was brought to Armenia because of citizen dissatisfaction of its ruthless leaders. This, this, this makes the premise of the entire Armenian state. People were dissatisfied. In every aspect, they were unhappy with the level of corruption, which was rampant in the country. They were unhappy about the electoral fraud. They were unhappy about, unhappy about customs and regulations. In every part of their life, every segment, to acquire a passport, to get a driver's license, to get a permit land transfers, there was full-fledged bribery involved. While all this was happening, our leaders were immune of the, the situation that is taking place in the country while they were preoccupied with accumulating their wealth. To a degree where their government became a kleptocratic government. Basically, kleptocrats are a group of leaders who thrive by stealing the resources of the country for their own personal benefit, while the citizens of the country are left out. Adding salt to the wound, on March 1, 2008, Kocharyan ordered the killing of 10 peaceful demonstrators in Yerevan. This also gave, solidified the power base for Sarkisian for another few years until further demonstrations broke up and dissatisfaction was percolating to a point where it was going to explode. To quell corruption, as you said, Sarkisian had 25,000 strong police force. Every time the people went out to demonstrate peacefully, they were beaten, they were harassed, they were arrested, and they were put to jail. In all this, it is very sad to say we observe the exodus of one million Armenian citizens 
who left their country because of despair and all the unpleasant circumstances that were surrounding their land. And of course, the ability not to be able to raise a living wage, not to be able to put bread. They were forced to live with their parents in crammed up old Soviet Union buildings. I mean, it was so unpleasant that anyone who could leave the country left the country. These are, in fact, people who would have never left their country if situations were good. I have talked with many Armenians and they said, we wouldn't have ever thought of leaving our country because we were happy and we loved our country. Anyway, the ones that stayed are living in poverty. We have almost 40% of the country is under poverty. And just, I forgot to tell you that the other day, you know, I was reading this little article on, on the happiness index, global index, and they have ranked the Armenian population as one of the most unhappy people in the world. And, you know, we Armenians are happy people. We are always trying to make happiness out of nothing. So such dissatisfaction accumulated to a point where at one point it, it exploded. So, and as the suffering increased and they could not take it anymore, the local uh, population, uh, came uh, uh, a very interesting movement called the Velvet Revolution. It was spearheaded by a coach, uh, uh, the current prime minister, uh, Nikol Pashinyan, started with five members, started walking out of Gyumri and accumulated and became one of the largest civil rights movements of Armenia. Bowing down to pressure, Serge Sarkisian resigned and Nikol Pashinyan was eventually elected within a couple of weeks and became the, the Prime Minister of uh, Armenia. So it is important to mitigate all this dissatisfaction, the corruption, and the judiciary unfairness, and the, and, and the pressure that the Armenian people have by providing them basic employment. Otherwise, Mr. Jabarian, I can tell you, our nation is at a risk of survival. Thank you very much. Uh, many Armenians in Armenia and the diaspora are asking, why the justice system of the first two years of Pashinyan administration has been uh, not able to uh, bring to justice not even a single oligarch? What needs to be done to maintain the current momentum? One of the most important things to do right now is to change the constitution. In the last year of Sarkisian's presidency, he changed the constitution from a presidential system to a parliamentary system. That was done primarily for him to be elected as prime minister, which has no time limitation on how long he can run the country. So it was not enough that he embezzled the country for eight years. Now he wanted to rule the country replacing the constitution and favoring basically the oligarchy. And in this constitution, there are many missing links to the judiciary reform, the replacement of the constitutional courts. And, you know, this has also tied the uh, hands of Mr. Pashinyan's government. And as you might uh, remember, in March, there was going to be a vote on the constitutional order of a referendum. And because of the COVID virus, it was postponed. So the other factor is, of course, the constitution has to be changed, is that, you know, it's not really an easy thing to uh, prosecute powerful people. Powerful people have powerful friends, powerful people have money, powerful people can have uh, the best lawyers in the world, they can afford anything, so they're resisting. And the reason they're resisting, basically, is to buy time, because they know well that they're never going to come back to power, but they don't want to go to jail, and this greedy 
selfish leaders of ours. They don't want to lose their own wealth and the privileges that is bestowed on them. So it is important and the constitution should and must change. And of course, you know, we have to uh, apply also different meaningful uh, changes and that will suit the present situation and also reform the, the judiciary at the lower level, the police force. And these are the things, a, a total reform of the country is necessary right now to go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Jabariat. Reportedly, uh, the occupier, the present occupier of the Holy Seat in Holy Echmiadzin of uh, the Catholicos of all Armenians, Karakin II, along with Western Diocese Primate Hovnan Derderian and his blood brother, who is the primate of the Russia Diocese, uh, Yezras Nersesian, have secretly formed an international cartel that has been integrated with the state-level kleptocracy, fostering religious uh, uh, kleptocracy within the Armenian church. When the current administration led by Prime Minister Pashinyan started uh, moving into the right direction in uh, bringing kleptocrats to justice, uh, and on April 13, when uh, uh, Ar Ar Armenia's National Security Service, which is the equivalent of uh, the FBI or the uh, KGB, uh, raided the headquarters of uh, one of uh, Karikin II's and Hovnan Derderian's allies, the primate of Ararat Diocese in Armenia, Navasat Kajoyan, and arrested him on tax evasion charges as well as fraud and embezzlement uh, uh, on April 13. And on April 14, Karikin II tried, in order to uh, cover uh, uh, his, uh, himself uh, and uh, protect his own position, he resorted to using the uh, coronavirus pandemic as a pretext, and he started using former President Robert Kocharian's incarceration as a political card against uh, Nigol Pashinyan government, uh, and as well as, uh, uh, in the same token, business tycoon Gagik Zarukian, uh, who is the head of the uh, 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 prosperous Armenia party, is now using the government must resign demand in, in order to protect his status as an untouchable. So what are your thoughts on uh, uh, these uh, developments? My thoughts are, as we have in the past expressed ourselves openly to the public, that Karikin Katoigos, Karikin II, has worked and collaborated with the last two presidents, with both Kocharian and Sarkisian. During the last 20 years, Karekin II and his cartel, including Western dioceses, Primate Hovan Derderian, Moscow's Azras Nersesian, France's Armenian diocese's Primate Vahan Hovnanyan, and a few others have collaborated, not secretly, openly with Robert Kocharian. So there is sort of this uh, relationship between this maybe, you know, shameful uh, church uh, representatives of ours, our church leaders, should we say, with Kocharian and the current government, they've embezzled and they have gotten excessively rich, especially Karakin, and he has manipulated the system, never coming to rescue when citizens were being beaten, arrested, and killed. He completely remained quiet. And now, when Kocharian has 
been arrested and is going in and out of jail for the last two years. Now, all of a sudden, now he's looking for justice. Can you believe this? He is the leader and the spiritual leader of the people, and he didn't move a finger when the people needed him. But now, all of a sudden, he's helping Kocharyan. Of course, this has been made possible because uh, he, is, he has to mask his guilt. And also, at the same time, he has to pretend that he's reaching and helping Kocharyan, his old gangster thug friend. So, unfortunately, now as we can see still, as I said to you earlier, with even with this uh, appeal of the Karekin to the president and the government, Kocharyan remained in jail for a while, but he's going back and forth. And last week he was let go with a $2 million bond. And uh, of course, to back to appeal, in uh, back to a, a, a future trial date. So this has given these uh, former leaders, including Sarukyan, Sarukyan, anyway, let me say a few words about him. He was a, a hand wrestler, can you imagine? And eventually climbed the ladders of uh, organized crime and established himself in a very, very well-to-do position in Armenia today. He owned cognac factories, he owns productions, and you know, in, in, in fact, when I'm talking about that, I want you, uh, my audience to realize that the entire economy is hijacked by the oligarchy. The former presidents own the biggest hotels, the biggest factories, the biggest natural resources, and also Saturian is not an exception. He's on their level. And of course, a few years ago, he joined the parliament, not to be touched, have that immunity, uh, so to speak. But a few weeks ago, as you might have followed, he lost his immunity with the vote of 80 people in parliament, members of parliament, and he had to appeal to court. Can you imagine a powerful person, an untouchable person like Saturian, Zarukyan, going to jail? So he's going to do everything to fight, no, not in order not to go to jail. So this uh, group of uh, former leaders, and I call them thugs, like Gagit Sarukyan, Robert Kocharyan, Serge Sarkisyan, the uh, treacherous Arthur, Artur Vanetsian, who was the head of the National Security Service. He betrayed Kochacho Sarkis uh, uh, Pashinyan and went and joined the Kochacho. So they have formed now a sort of this criminal alliance to fight and to avoid going to jail. But as for them coming to back to power, I highly doubt it. The people of Armenia, the youth, have now matured. Most of them, don't forget, they are born after the uh, in, after independence. After the independence. After they're the, independence. They're the independence so generation. They are the new generation whose consciousness, whose thinking, whose minds are different. A and very they're healthy. Uh, a couple of hundred uh, uh, thrum and, and ask them to, to go and vote for Sirfer. These are boys and girls who have bright minds. And gov uh, the present government actually is, is composed of these young brains of the country. Thank you, Mr. Uh, with the fall of the Soviet uh, Empire uh, and the disappearance of the Iron Curtain, Armenia's new generation, which many call the independence generation, uh, had a, a unique opportunity to interact with their uh, uh, blood brothers in the Armenian diaspora, in the free world. And there, there has been an active period of exchanges between the Armenian diaspora youth and Armenia's youth. So now we have a, a, a fabulous new generation in, in the Republic of Armenia. And that's the generation that's fighting for Armenia's status as a, a sovereign state, by all means. The new generation also recognizes the fact that Armenia is facing 
the existence of an international cartel which has big plans for itself to the detriment of the Armenian people. This cartel was established with the participation of many oligarchs in Armenia along with the head of the church, Karakin II. Karakin II organized his own church-based cartel. By the way, many, many critiques of the Armenian church uh, uh, leader are not criticizing the church as an institution, but they're criticizing the corrupted leadership. We must distinguish between a, crit uh, a criticism directed at uh, the corrupted leaders and protection of the church. Many of the Karakin second uh, loyalists or uh, lackeys, many say, uh, are ac falsely accusing that critiques of the Armenian church, uh, uh, critiques of uh, Karakin II, are also uh, critiques of the Armenian church. What do you say to that, uh, Dr. Korajan, Mr. No. Korajan? You, this this was actually a, a mindset that we could see, we, we saw many many years ago 10 15 years ago and when i started writing about Karakin and his corruption i would get personal phone calls and they would say oh my god how can you do that you're going to die you're going to you're going to you're going to be going to hell, hell and this and that but now less and less people are calling and or are questioning the, the integrity of Karakin. Our church is an institution on its own. These are people who are elected and they are sitting on the throne and they're running their life. And they happen to be extremely, extremely corrupt. Although it is mutually uh, exclusive, you know, we should never confuse these two facts. The church is a church. It's an establishment. It's a place where I go and I pray. It's a church where my children go and pray. It's where we get married. It's when, And we believe in our, our faith. But hating or criticizing the Gatorigos does not mean that you are not a good Christian, a good Armenian Christian, or you hate your church. So this has to be made clear. These are people who are abusing their power, who are exploiting our church for their own benefits, who are running more or less a private life of rich people, having their own families, their own children, their own wealth, and, and all this together. And it is for us, when we see this, Disregardless, irregardless of being uh, Karekin and uh, Gatorigos, we have to speak and we should be shamed, ashamed for keeping those kind of crooks and thugs in, our, in, our, in, in the helm of our religious organizations. Thank you, Mr. Jabarian. Uh, Karekin II, Hovnan Derderin here at the, in the Western United States and uh, uh, Germany's uh, uh, Armenian diocese uh, primate uh, Serofe Isakhanian and others uh, that are part of the Karakin cartel have been trying to hijack democracy within the Armenian church. Uh, but the, luckily for the Armenian church, the parishioners, members of the church, the lay people, Ashkaraganer, they are fighting back to protect the church so that they could get rid of kleptocracy and the corrupted religious leadership uh, uh, so that the church can preserve its uh, rich history and health, uh, healthy status. Uh, going back to uh, the uh, revolutions uh, that happened recently in and around Armenia, in, in that region, what is the distinction between Ukraine's orange revolution and Armenia's velvet revolution, Mr. Korajan? Um. It is a, a very interesting comparison that you made because Armenia and Ukraine were both a part of the Soviet Union. So they have the same background, the same uh, sort of a mindset. And uh, when uh, this 
revolutions, peaceful revolutions, or supposed to be peaceful revolutions, started. Ukraine went through what is called the Orange Revolution. Basically, Ukraine's Orange Revolution had one goal in mind. It was to kick the Russians out of their country and, and, and take over completely their own country because they, you know, because of the, the, uh, the port, the naval base, and the importance of Ukraine as compared to our country, Armenia, the, the Russians were doing their best to stay there and dominate. Anyway, at the time, the president of, uh, of uh, Ukraine, Mr. Yanukovych, was extremely pro-Russian. So they removed him and they placed him with a pro-American, pro-Western president. Now, the situation in Armenia is entirely different. The uprising in the Armenia and of originally the small ones and the bigger ones which were quelled down, but the Velvet Revolution was not directed against the Russians. It had nothing to do with Russians. It had to do all with mitigating, fighting unfairness, injustice, and also the removal of their president from Armenia. So this, while both are sort of fruit and velvet revolutions, they varied. One did not want the Russians, but we have said, you know, Russians are uh, welcome in, you know, we have good policy with the Russians because we have three million Armenians that live in the Soviet Union. We have to maintain good ties. We were part of the Soviet Union for 50 years. We have had good relationships with the Soviet Union. Our children went and got their education in the Soviet Union and our, our scientists were allowed to work in their country. So we have no qualms and no, no hard feelings with the Russians as it stands. And it shouldn't be. The same it should be with the Americans. We have to have good relationships. But what distinctly separates these two revolutions was, one was an anti-Russian revolution and one was was a revolution for justice. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Korajan. Uh, uh, you have uh, also privately explained, uh, because of time constraint, we have to bring uh, our conversation uh, 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 to its completion within the next okay. few seconds. Uh, so uh, uh, you, uh, thank you for also mentioning the importance of Armenia uh, 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 developing multi-level, multipolar, non... Uh, uh, can, can you elaborate just for 20 seconds on that one? The yeah, you know, Ar Armenia has to actually develop a non-aligned uh, policy which will not let its country be dominated either by the Soviet Union or Russia or the United States. They should maintain their own policy independently and resist pressure from the, the superpowers and run their country in a harmonious way to benefit the livelihood of our, and to improve the livelihood of our people. A foreign policy similar to India's. Uh, thank India. you so much. Thank you so much. And we shall continue at a later date. We shall continue our discussion with Mr. Korajan on many, many important topics. And... Have a wonderful evening.